Okay, so I'm going to call the September 10th meeting of the OGAT committee to order. It is now 7.38 p.m. And uh, we have in attendance myself, the chairman, Saul Silverstein. We have Mike Muddit in the upper left-hand corner, Marlene Silverstein, the recording secretary in the upper right-hand corner. Middle row on the left is Chris Kelly, our assistant coordinator. In the center is Gary Del Piano, our committee member on the right. Uh, is Bob Kelly, committee member. Lower left is Ron Davis, the coordinator. Um, Mine isn't anything like that. <laughs> the um, first item on the agenda is questions and comments. I don't have any. Does anyone else? Nope. No? Then the next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the uh, July 9th meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. And do I have a second? Second and by whom? Barry. Bob Kelly, I heard. Thank you, Bob. Uh, does anyone want time to review them or have you already reviewed them? Review them, read them. Okay, I'll, all in favor of approving the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. Thank you. It sounds unanimous to me. Um, the next item is the coordinators report and we have two of them because we did not have a meeting in August. Uh, so we have the July coordinator's report and the August coordinator report. The August meeting was canceled because of massive power failure in the town of Orange. Um, and uh, hang on a second. I just got a message from B&H on a product we ordered. Um, so, um, Actually, I think I'm out of order. We should have done the budget review. Oh, we can't do the budget review. The, the next item was actually the budget review. I'm sorry about that. We can't review the budget because the town got a new accounting system and they're still having some problems with it. They could not generate the budget reports for us. Well, for I wonder week. why we didn't get one. Yeah. So they, they uh, I spoke to uh, Corinne yesterday and she said she was told that they could not generate the reports. There was a problem with the payroll side of the reports. So she would get it to me as soon as she can, but she couldn't do it by the meeting. So um, we'll have to hope they straighten it all out by next month. And they have to hope they straighten it out soon because we have to write a report to Cable Advisory Council that's gonna depend on having some reports. Okay, now I get back to the coordinators reports for both July and August. Um, Ron, do you wanna go through them or should I? Well, we can do it. Um, we had 18 meetings. Um, this estimated annual total will be 216. Uh, let's see, I have a bunch of new stuff here. Uh, the coordinator reported uh, that we had uh, 111 live hits. July Discover VOD hits and that were not available. July YouTube Live and VOD hits were 998. Program changes uh, were July 17th and July 29th. Um, Chris, you wanna take it from there? Sure. Um, you want me to take over, you want me to talk With about- the July programs. Just go over the programs themselves, and yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so basically, we don't really have a month. Uh, you know, the general programs got like around the same amount of hits. Um, I would say the the one that really generated the most was the Board of Ed. That one uh, got around eight hundred, I believe. And uh, I That's mean, a lot. definitely more than than we've ever gotten since we've been since we've had a new way of accumulating uh, a hit count. So I think it obviously has to do with COVID and parents, teachers, students being interested in what the, uh, the schools are deciding to do with school and whatnot. So um, definitely seeing a lot of activity. The Board of Ed themselves are doing a good job promoting the YouTube link that we provide. And that makes a huge difference. Um, they put the link on their, uh, on the, uh, I think it's the, like you click on the board of ed you you go to the board of ed website and i think it's like right on the front page it's right there to click on 
um, every month. So people can get to it easily. And I wish more commissions did that, but it's honestly, it's honestly uh, really good to see that people are utilizing the channel in that way. So. Okay. Um, yeah. And pretty much the rest of the month, actually a lot, most of the board meetings um, were, were still virtual. There were a few um, live ones uh, during um, July. I noticed um, Water Pollution Control Authority was in person, Board of Ed was in person, and uh, Board of Selectmen was in person. All the other meetings in July were virtual meetings. Um, um, Want to move on to August or any questions on no, July? I'll just, uh, I'll just add that the Town of Orange continued to hold most official board meetings, most official board meetings and other meetings virtually as you said, uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic precautions, no town talk episodes were produced and OGOT operated mostly remotely during the months, respectfully Ron Davis and Chris Kelly. Yeah, and again, I, I noticed that the Board of Ed continued to have hits and there were over a thousand for that same meeting that was actually the July meeting. Yep, and, and we saw uh, some... in, in August, I see 328 hits for the Board of Ed. So one, que one question while we're still on July's. So sorry. I might have missed it, but the Discover VOD, is that now done? Because I see that there's no hits on it. Is it, I, I know the subscription was going to end and they were going to end the service, but I just didn't know. The, That's a good question. I'd like to know too. Yeah, the subscription doesn't end till I think November, but I think Chris was having a lot of, um, he was kind of got buried and, um, he had been putting stuff up on YouTube, and uh, he had a problem, I think, he told yeah, the, the, the me, getting something on Discover, yeah. and he didn't have time to diagnose it, so he just stopped putting stuff on Discover. I think he did tell Ron that he was going to do that, and Ron was okay with it. Yep. And um, okay. so, so we did not have anything up on VOD on Discover for July or August, and yep. um, the only thing Discover is doing for us right now is live, live stream. Uh, and that's it's basically our choice because we it's just we didn't have a chance to diagnose it because of all the other things he, that Chris was uh, doing. I was wondering because I went to the town website and I found it running on Discover and I went I thought we got off of that. No, we 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 um we have not we have not um gotten it. We have I'll cover this during the CAC um, grant review about what's going on with, between Discover and Telview. But um, Discover, we're still, we, we, we could still do stuff on Discover and they are doing the live stream for us. Yes. At least till November 1st, I think is the date. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the videos are still up there. I, I, yeah. I didn't think we were done, done. No, the and VODs, I saw that the, the you, can YouTube... see, you can see VODs, I think, through the middle of June on Discover. After that, you have to go to YouTube. Yeah, okay. and I'm, I'm really going to try to work on deleting a lot of, I, I want to really take down the link to Discover all together. It really shouldn't even be on the town website anymore. I, I, the Discover uh, format and platform is just too pl problematic, and I have a lot of trouble getting videos to play on their player. So not not so much the live stream, but the 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 VOD uh, videos themselves. Depending on what device you're on, I've had problems with getting stuff to play, and I just don't want people to have have something that's problematic like that. I'd rather use YouTube because most of the yeah, videos play no problem. Um, and I'm sure Teleview is going to be a lot more, um, uh, it won't be as problematic as, as what we're dealing with with the scar. I agree. We've got to make it as simple as possible for the, for the viewing public. And I just wish we could have a little better exposure when you open the town website to get to OGAT. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, right now, right now you have to click truck. on the link at the bottom of the town webpage that takes you to the OGAT webpage, and yeah. then you have to click on the link for what you want. If you want live stream, if you want discover, or if you want YouTube, you, you select one of those links. Where, so, where can we get a little better treatment there? So I mean, I, when I, they're I, done with the, when they're done with the fire truck, can we get that spot? Because that spot's they, like yeah, right yeah, they, they, they're all over the place. Yeah. So hang hang on. So. Um, I spoke to Chris a little bit about this last night, and what he said was, he, uh, I uh, I told him Ron was thought he was going to call uh, the first selectman about getting us better placement on the webpage. What Chris says, he would rather wait until we 
uh, switch over from Discover to Telview because we're going to have a whole bunch of different links anyway and try and get everything done at that point. And I think that's, that's, a, that's, I think that's a good idea. I think so too. Yeah, my other point I was going to bring up is, you know, if, if we're going to stick on YouTube long enough, we probably should do a little bit of our back catalog. But if we're going to switch over to um, Telview, that's probably where we should put the effort into getting some of our older vid older videos on. I think previously we had talked about we always try to keep three months active on on demand. Or is there there's there like an agreement on how long we want? Back I thought videos it was on? six months, depending on capacity. Okay. So, I mean, it may make sense when we get on to tell view, see if we can figure out any easy ways to get a whole bunch of our back catalog up yeah. so that people don't lose a whole bunch of the videos. You know, amazingly, uh, our, our requests, maybe once or twice a year tops uh, for yeah. old, old uh, programs. Well, I think, well, because we're integrating it with our hypercaster, I think that there's some really easy ways to get that content on the yeah. uh yeah, that'd be awesome. The cloud. So there's all the contents on the, on the hypercaster. So we could just, we could transfer it super easy. That'd be awesome. That wouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not looking for hits necessarily, but you know, for it's great for that one person that wants to go see the January first selectman meeting or something. Absolutely. It yeah. happens. But it happens. Rarely. Yep. Oh well, yeah. I mean, with any, there's a bunch of different content on there that people can see. So we should keep it yep. up. Yeah, and we're all about access, so get get people the access. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, uh, is there any other discussion on those two coordinator reports? If not, I will ex accept the motion to approve them. I'll make a motion to approve okay. both July and August coordinators reports. And I thought I heard Bob seconding. Second. Thank you, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Unanimous. Uh, next item on the agenda was the action item list and there's not much left on it uh the first item is uh find the missing parts for the existing stabilizer system which we don't have to do anymore because we got a new stabilizer system that seems so to that's, work nice. that's closed uh sext was next was the um police academy town talk as ron said due to the social distancing we have not made any progress with that one um, and then the last item was uh, Chris had written a procedure for recording and broadcasting virtual meetings um, to add to the OGAD procedure book. And I had made a comment last time and I did not get a chance to speak to Chris about it, but I thought it was, it was a good write up. What I thought it needed was a little bit more detail, detail to pretend the person reading it knows nothing. <laughs> so you might have to give them a few more steps to That's fill fine. in, you know, things that you would do naturally Someone yep. who has not done this before might not realize where to, you know, click on this or click on that is. Uh, so you may want to take a look at that and perhaps beef it up a little bit. Yeah, uh, make it so your next door neighbor can understand it. Yeah. yeah. Saul, yeah. is that something you could share with the rest of the committee just so we can all have a look at it? Uh, I thought I don't remember sent it that. to everyone, but I will forward it to everyone. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Again, Thank you. I, I may not have forwarded it to everyone. I think I just sent it to you for review and then. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I will forward it to everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You want, I, no yeah. Problem. Then if you guys have any comments, I'll just yeah. make it, make all the addition, like, you know, additions in one shot. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So I will uh, note that um, to send that out and we can all take a look at it and then Chris can uh, finish the update. So okay. thank you for that, Chris. Yep. Um, the next item on the agenda is the CAC grant. So where we are with the CAC grant is, and I think I, I don't remember if I told everyone or, or I made it, did not have the opportunity because of the canceled meeting. Yeah, I think we got more that. money than we asked for. We got about $500 extra because the Cable Advisory Council did not get requested added up to the full $100,000 that they had to distribute. So they ended up giving everybody about 500, a little more than $500. So we have an extra five or so hundred dollars to spend. And I had asked Chris to come up with some things we could buy with it. And I, I would really like to get that list very quickly because I do want to make the order. Um, and um, uh, so if, if, if anyone has any suggestions, please get them to Chris 
and Chris, I'd appreciate Chris left. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know where he went. He's he's in the studio, and I know he must be checking something. Well, but I noticed I, today that uh, when uh, Chris was uh, shooting Pat O'Sullivan, uh, they don't have a, a decent uh, document holder. They got this great big monstrous wooden thing that you got to drag across the floor. And you know, today we have you know beautiful lightweight aluminum ones. Uh, and the town doesn't even own one. I thought we might pick up. Well, a if better. you can, if you could, Ron, if you could, if you have um, one of those that you would recommend and send that over to Chris, you know, uh, I'll do that. A link to it. That yeah. would be good. If there's any other equipment that we can get adding up to 500, a little bit above 500 is fine. Yeah. As long as it's as, as a, a amount of our excess funds plus some that we can take out of our own general funds, that's fine. Uh, I just want to make sure we get to spend the, the, the CAC grant money because we do have to report on what we use the money for in December. Um, so, um, Chris, Ron's going to send you a, a suggestion. If you if you can run the rest of the list by Ron or Mike or Gary mm -hmm. or you know the rest of the committee if you want, and then uh, send it on to me, and then I'll try and get ordering going. Maybe we get a mic stand like Mike has. Look at that. Isn't this thing picture. awesome? I love this microphone. That's an awesome one. Look I think that. we have a few of those. We have a few. <laughs> I think we bought some just now. Yeah, fact. we have one oh, okay. around, okay. around somewhere. As a matter of fact, we just used it today. Yeah. Um, that was the first time, Chris. What, the stabilizer? No, the light stand. The light stand, yep. Yeah. yeah we used the light stand the light. and the stabilizer today. Yeah. For the first time, and it worked out very well. Chris enjoyed yeah, using it. Yeah, so what, what, they, what they're talking about today was yeah. that the town clerk had called me about a week ago and, and asked if it would be appropriate to film a, a, a uh, like a PSA, a public service announcement on mail-in balloting and how we're gonna do it. And I said, of course it's appropriate. That's what OGAD is here for. Yeah. And so I asked them to contact Chris and Ron and set that up. And apparently they did that video today and yeah, hopefully right. be on the air soon. Um, I used so the new one. stabilizer for it. It was pretty, Pretty nice. Yeah. The new stabilizer is quite a beast. It's it's a little <laughs> bit heavy. Um, I realized that very shortly into yeah, filming yeah. that <laughs> I'm gonna have to start working out again. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but the, it works really well. It's a yeah. it's a really cool product to use. There's a little bit of a learning curve with it because there's so many adjustments, but I'm I'm really looking forward to using it. I think it's gonna be cool for for shoots like what we just did today and other other stuff along those lines. And yep. the new light worked well too. It right. did, and we have two, it came with three lights. We only used one, but I'm sure if we, you know, we utilized all three, it would have been really good, but one was perfect for what we were doing. And and we yeah. have we have a we lot of options now. Yeah. Yeah. We we'll look forward to seeing that on the channel. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great content to have. Yes. Perfect. Yep. We play it a lot. Yep. A lot of older people that don't want to go in and uh, do their ballots, uh, you yeah. know, the regular way. Yeah, I'm hoping that they can maybe just put the video, like, uh, put a thumbnail right on the front page of the of the town website, so it's just right there. You know, go on the town I'm, website. Yes. Yeah, so print, yeah, uh, that's that's a good idea, and uh, perhaps you should um, I speak, to, speak to Pat himself. So yeah, we'll he may have a little more influence yeah. on what goes on that first page. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think Ann Denny is the one to talk to about that. I'll I'll mention it to her because she makes some she makes a lot of the changes. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm sure they'll be up for it. Yeah. I, okay, I great. Good idea. Talk to Pat about that too. I did. I mentioned that's it what I said. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, I you, you had said yeah. it, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so for the rest of the CAC grant, so the I ordered everything that we wanted to order from B and H in New York, and a lot of it came in, and it came in in two boxes, three boxes at a time on different days, and uh, I had a, they did not put OGAT on the address, so I had to make sure that it got delivered to OGAT, and I got everything delivered. One item actually got delivered to the town garage, because it was too big for the guy to get off the truck without a forklift. That's and, probably the uh, rack. The, That's the garage people, him. and that was this big rack that you see behind Chris. I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know if that was the true weight. It, it's, it's, it's not as heavy as they, they, 
played it yeah. out to be. They but told it me was, it was 230 pounds. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? it was, yeah, it's but pretty so, little, so the, yeah. the garage, the, the folks at the garage brought it over. Um, but in any event, what happened, we got, we got most of what we ordered. What we didn't get, we did not get the Sony camera. That's coming next week. Uh, I called b &H yesterday to find out the status of the things we didn't get. The Sony camera, they said ETA is 915, which may be the ETA to them. So we should get a little bit after that. The brother laser printer, there is no ETA. No one has that printer. <laughs> Every It's back ordered everywhere. Wow. Um, we did also not get um, the podium that Ron has always wanted us to order. I just got an email from B&H because uh, they went to look into it yesterday. They said it's going to ship next week. Oh, great. It's, it's being drop shipped from the manufacturer. And that's a podium that we're going to put in the High Plains Community Center. So you put a line to town garage. We have meetings in there. <laughs> okay. The other thing we didn't get, we didn't get, we have a, a Logitech uh, mouse for our Mac. There's no ETA on the Logitech mouse. And that's a brand new item that's just being delivered, I think, to the retailers like this month or next month. So that may not show up for a few weeks. And the other thing we didn't get that was very funny was he, we, we ordered a new TriCaster. We got the TriCaster. We ordered a service contract for the TriCaster. We didn't get it. We didn't get the service contract renewal on the old TriCaster. And when I called them up yesterday, they said, oh, you have to give us the serial numbers so we can register them. Mm -hmm. So I emailed them the serial numbers and they emailed me back one of their you know, generic responses when they get an email that said, um, I think Gary dropped off. And we lost Gary. Yeah. Um, He's still on. He just stopped his video for a second. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so a generic response that said, Due to COVID-19, things are taking longer than you would expect. Please bear with us type thing. So um, I still don't know the status of those two uh, service contracts. But those are the things we are still waiting for. We got everything else. And um, I, w what I did is as they came in, I added them to our inventory. And sometimes the serial number was listed on the invoice they sent us. So I put the invoice, uh, the serial numbers into the inventory. Also, I've asked Chris to go, please check them because they put a serial number down for the new TriCaster that was not the serial number on the back of the TriCaster. And I had to send them a second email with the corrected serial number last night. Um, so Chris, will, will, we'll go through the stuff that we got, make sure the serial numbers on the inventory are correct because I do need the serial numbers also for the CAC grant final report in December. Whew. So that's pretty much where we are with the grant. Any questions? That's great. Great progress considering how recently we got the money. Yeah. Yeah. The money came in very quickly. It actually, uh, we submitted, we submitted the request July 15th. I think we got the money in August, like right, two weeks or three weeks later. Yeah, but I mean, we already have everything ordered, which is amazing considering it's just September. Yeah. Oh, the only thing I didn't order, and I until yesterday, I did not order the Telview because I didn't want to um, get that too early. Uh, but I ordered it yesterday. I, I uh, put in the purchase request for it yesterday. So uh, Corinne should have sent out a, or will be sending out soon a purchase order to Telview, and hopefully they'll have that uh, set up. Uh, they have to send us some equipment and have, help us set it up. Uh, which will probably be done virtually. Um, and hopefully that'll all happen in October and we should be okay uh, to not have a gap between Telview and Discover, Discover and Telview. Any questions? Nope. nope. Everybody's quiet. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, Town talk is the next item on the agenda, and Ron already covered that. Nothing is happening on that due to the COVID. The last item on the agenda is the town annual report. So every year at this time, we have to write a report on what we've done during the year. I sent you all a copy of that report. Um, it's uh, pretty much boilerplate. The, the first paragraph uh, is basically what OGAT's all about and what we do. The second paragraph tells a little bit about 
um, our technology and, and things that have affected us during the year. And this year, COVID-19 was the big thing that affected us. And I added some of the new items that we had purchased yep. during the year. Did a good job. Um, the third paragraph is a list of the pro, the most of the programs that we broadcast. Um, and then the last two paragraphs just say uh, we broadcast things on channel 79 on Optimum TV and channel 6063 on Frontier, which reminds me of a conversation Chris and I had last night. I'll get to that in a second. The last paragraph is basically I, I invite people to provide feedback uh, or if they're interested in joining OGAT committee or working with us to record stuff or broadcast stuff to, to call the first selectman. Um, I'd like a, I would like to, any discussion on that? Is there any discussion on that? I thought it was really good. Thank yeah, well, you. well done. Uh, uh, I noticed that yes. good as well. Thank you. Ron? You have yeah, I noticed you got all the names on there, but you didn't mention the coordinator and the assistant coordinator's name. This is on the list of committee members. Normally, they, they put a list of committee members on, on e, for e, in the annual report, they list the committee members. That's all they list. They don't list the, the employees. You're an employee. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys all report to the first selectman's office anyway, so. Yeah, in fact, I don't even, even have to. I don't, that second page doesn't count because I'm only allowed one page. They add that anyway, so. <laughs> So that doesn't go, it goes in a report, they put it in the report. Yeah. Um, so I will entertain a motion to accept this. So moved. Thank you, Mike and- Second. Bob again. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. The, I, I brought up something very quickly and that was Frontier. Uh, so I called, I spoke to Chris last night and um, I, I was asking him to get me that serial number, that errant serial number. And he told me he was, he couldn't talk to me because he was on the phone with a technician from Frontier. And so when he finally called me back, I said, what's going on? And he said, Frontier called him and apparently we had not been sending them a signal for a while. Right. For how long? Six, yeah. For six months, you said. Holy cow. And this is the first day, actually, I guess they called Ron first and Ron gave him Chris's number. So this is like the first they contacted us. And, and what's funny is when Frontier first took over the service from AT&T Uverse, we spent months trying to find a contact person at Frontier that we could talk to in case we had a problem. And it took us several months to get a name. And then they detect the problem and they don't even call us to tell us. So they finally got a hold of us. They got a hold of Chris last night. Chris spent a couple of hours on, on the phone with this technician trying to track down this problem. And it ended up, he ended up tracing the cable that we send the signal out to. And he traced it all the way into the IT room where it plugs into a panel. And apparently the wire, the connector that went into that panel was slightly pulled out just enough so that the signal didn't go through or went through only intermittently. So Chris plugged it back in, noticed that the wire was probably hanging loose and that probably helped pull it out. So he secured the wire to a, a wooden board, I guess, that's on the wall to make sure that doesn't happen again. Then he went back into the control room, the OGAT control room, and it's still a problem. And the tech said he had to log into the system and Chris, Chris had to go find the paperwork for this system and he found it found how to log into the system and then he and the technician worked together and we now are back on frontier channel 6063 great life uh, so nice job i guess not many people were missing it uh, <laughs> no they so they did they were getting calls people were um, i don't know how many but he did mention that people were wondering what was going on uh, some wow. viewers were after so. six That's months, yep. maybe two people. But we got put on a <laughs> chronic uh, list. Obvious, uh, yeah. obvi obviously, not a lot of people. <laughs> not a ton of people. Obviously, Frontier doesn't have many orange residents that are si signing up with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we were put on a chronic list by Frontier as as you know a channel that was problematic. And I told him, I'm like, well, hopefully after this, you could slowly get us off that list, and we can. 
I can't know. believe it took them six months to uh, let us know that we were chronic. Yeah, it was. It was. There was some communication issues. I mean, once I got a got a hold of someone, and I I think Ron forwarded. Finally, I got a, a email from Ron. It was uh, like a forwarded message from Frontier because I think they originally only had Ron's contact. And um, once I was able to get um, one a guy's number and. And I think I think Ron ended up having uh, I think he had a conversation with the guy because I must have gotten I think I got a call from him and I checked my voice. Yeah, I gave him your him. number. Yeah, it was and I and I remember it was a random area code. I thought it was like a spam voice message, and I I I read it and I was like, oh well, this is Frontier. Wow. And I finally and the the gentleman was very nice. We worked on it for about two and a half hours. He worked oh, he he worked past his his normal hours to help me out, and uh, got paid double time. I, I don't know. He was. At he was time and a half. It was. Um, it, it was. It was successful after after a while, and and uh, you know we we found the paperwork that was buried in in the in the studio, and now we're back up and running. And I learned a lot about what the system. I I had, ne I had never worked with this system before. It was all new to me, but at least now, if there is a problem, I have a good way to go about fixing it, and it shouldn't take that long. It I the communication barrier has been broken and now I can actually get into the equipment myself. So should be very quick at addressing issues in the future. Yeah. And Chris, if you wouldn't mind asked, scanning asked, that document and putting it online. I, I yeah. asked Chris to take that documentation and put it in our red book or whatever book we use. I think I called it the red book that has documentation for all the different pieces of equipment that we use. Um, I asked him to put that there. And the other thing you could put there is that forwarded email <laughs> that has yep. maybe frontiers contact information on it too yep I, yep yep absolutely yeah. yep. when they called me six months ago uh i i happened to be uh, at town hall so i went into the room and checked it and i said everything is running the lights are all on and everything looks good he said well then i guess it's somewhere else and that yep. so six months later <laughs> They're telling us it's still that way. Um, I can't believe that. Well, the lights were so, on on the equipment, but the signal wasn't getting out. <laughs> it, the equipment appeared to be working totally fine. There was nothing visually wrong with the equipment, oh. and that was kind of that was obviously an issue. And it wasn't until I I really spent some time with the technician, and the, and we tried a bunch of things. It wasn't until then where we had some idea of what it could have been. So, so I'm really glad we got the chance to do it. I mean, not probably this year but is it worth us looking into getting a, a cable feed back from frontier in the in the go get studio to see they if we can actually that. see our own channel they don't do it um i haven't asked them about that and I, I mentioned how it was kind of unfortunate we couldn't monitor it ourselves and he didn't really have a a clear-cut answer to as to what we can do i don't know if, if he provides anything or if he would know i can always reach out to him and ask when we first put it in that subject came up and they gave us a flat no. Um, we had to buy the equipment to, they gave us the money to buy the equipment, but they would not provide it. They would not install it. They wouldn't help us at all in any way. They, you know, we were very upset with them at the time. And it was AT&T originally, it wasn't Frontier. Yeah. And AT&T, but yeah, they gave us the money to buy and install the equipment. They wouldn't do it themselves. I think we ended up using Discover actually to install it for yes, us. Yes, we did um buy it from them and install it and um they were not really very into this with us like there were cable vision was much more forthcoming in setting okay. us up yeah but cable vision hasn't replaced our equipment since we started this almost yeah that's 20 right. years ago that's they, right. they come if we call them i've gotten more i've had better experience with that engineer from frontier than i've had with cable vision in the past really? few months yeah i think really I got to give kudos to Frontier on this one. Yeah. Good. That's good. That's good. Hopefully, we can get that kind of help from Optimum. Yeah. So. It wouldn't count on it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone from Optimum is watching right now, we could use some help on our signal. <laughs> all right. So that that's all I have. And uh, if anyone else has anything, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. I'll take a second. second. Thank you. And uh, we're out of here. Everybody Thank you very much for your participation. Thanks, guys. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night, all.